Good morning. We're uh, going to get an early start because I have a meeting a little later this morning. And uh, so we'll uh, get this done here and then shift it over to my Facebook page. Uh, please remember that tomorrow for our regular worship service uh, at 1030, we'll do that here on the Owego United Methodist Church page, not on my page. Uh, we'll do it live here. And then we'll send it over to uh, my Facebook page. So you'll be able to see this on uh, on uh, my Facebook page at probably around 1130 or so it'll start. For some people that may work out better anyway because oftentimes there are jumps and skips and uh, as things are catching up with a live feed. So um, at any rate, uh, we're going to do that uh, here and then shift over today. And we're going to do that tomorrow and we're going to do that continuously from there on so uh, it'll uh, be starting here on the church facebook page okay all right well we are going to finish up today uh, this this week's study of what it means to be a resurrection people people of the resurrection in anticipation of a reality um, the foundation of our hope uh, when we proclaim a faith in christ it's the goal. It is the end result. Uh, resurrection and eternal life as God created us to be from the very beginning. would invite you to uh, join with me in prayer. I uh, also would invite you to keep a couple of uh, folks in your prayers. Uh, John Wickland, who is getting toward the end of his uh, confinement period, uh, having tested positive for COVID. He's been doing well, and we're thankful for that. So keep him in your prayers. Also, uh, Bill Jones, as I understand it, has uh, had shingles, and uh, they're concerned about it heading to the eye. And uh, having just gone through that myself not too long ago, uh, he is very close to the core of my praying uh, in the last few days, for sure. So please keep Bill in your prayer and, uh, and ask God to protect his eye in particular as he goes through this time. Uh, let us then join together in prayer and open our devotional this morning. God, King Eternal, you who divide the day from the darkness <clears throat> and turn the shadow of death into the morning, drive far off from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when the night comes, rejoice to give thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture this morning comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 51 to 58. Here are these words that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to start back on, on uh, verse 50 because I think it brings us in a little better. Paul is, again, speaking to the church of Corinth, and he says, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God... He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. You know, as we consider this passage, um, it really holds up a lot of stuff that are that really are things we need to be thinking about on a regular basis 
and considering. Um, we are so easily overwhelmed uh, by the things that uh, go on around us and our perception of them from the limited and human perspective. Um, I certainly know less than anyone else. Uh, I'm speaking from personal experience. I'm speaking out of my own heart. And uh, we, we can't always see the depth of God's plan in every detail of our lives, how he is planning on using that to lead us to a new place, to a new state, to, uh, to new life. And the fact is that he is using it all as we come before him, as we lay our lives before him. He is using it all to lead us toward what is to come. And so Paul is recognizing that in this passage, and he's lifting it up. And, and he's pointing out that in our natural state, uh, we are not ready to meet God. You know, we're still, we're still like uh, uh, the people, and, uh, you know, and at best Moses, you know, there at Mount Horeb, and the people are standing around the bottom of the mountain, and they dare not go any closer because they know that they will die. The glory of God will overwhelm them and they will die. Moses has uh, a bit more relationship uh, personally and directly with God. And so he's up on the mountain and he wants to see God. And God says, no, you can't see my full glory. If you do, you will die. It will overwhelm you. And uh, and so he sees just the the littlest bit of it. We just had you know had a devotional that uh, kind of came off of that not too long ago he just sees this little bit of the glory of god and it's enough to almost undo him so end result the perishable cannot inherit the kingdom of god the flesh and blood the state that we're in a state which includes with it the destructive power of sin why do i say the destructive power of sin well because it's the foundation of death so in, in our present state, we cannot inherit fully the kingdom of God. We work toward it. We work for it. We work in it. And we uh, give ourselves to it. But we cannot ultimately inherit it. In other words, we cannot truly grasp it in its fullness in our present state. That's what Paul is saying here. The perishable doesn't inherit the imperishable. A change has to occur, and that change for us will either be, you know, death in this life, or a complete reconstruction at the second coming of Christ, and we will be made new. <clears throat> we'll be made imperishable. And uh, that's the promise. That's the goal. That's the hope. That's what we have that we stand on in a in a very strong sense uniquely as christians it's not something we achieve on our own it's not something we achieve by being good or being perfect or being you know those are things we strive for those are things we pray for those are things we want to pursue diligently in our lives but those are you know those are not the things that are going to save us we are saved by faith in jesus christ what he did what he is doing and what he will do and so expecting um perfection at least from someone else is always going to be disappointing because in this life we are not probably going to achieve it now uh, wesley talked about christian perfection and his understanding that it was possible uh, that, you know, is some people would receive the second gift. What does that say? It's a gift. It is a work of God in us, not we ourselves. Okay, so um, this is not something that we should expect in anyone else, but it is something we should strive for in ourselves. To pray for and seek out. Does that make sense? I hope so, because it's, it's it really is a critical element of Christian life and faith. We are striving after perfection. God has called us to that. And the fact of the matter is, he's the one that's going to deliver it to us 
when we are able, willing, and uh, ready to receive it. And that's huge. That's a huge thing. But the change is going to occur. And it, and it says here, uh, listen, I'll tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. But there's going to become a day when Jesus is going to return. There still will be Christians who are alive. They will not have died. Most of us, most Christians throughout history will have died at that point. I mean, that's just a given. That's, a, that's just a physical reality in a spiritual world. So, um, you know, most people will have fallen asleep. Now, mind you, um, that's led to a lot of assumptions about what happens when we die. Some people think we go into soul sleep and... Uh, Bible says to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. So I think our souls do not sleep. I think our our bodies are done until they are resurrected by God. But our souls, in fact, go to be in the presence of the Lord. And uh, and I think we're going to be very conscious of that. At, at any rate, when the time comes for a reconstruction of perfection, you remember when God got done. Uh, creating, and he said, it's not just good, it's very good. Well, that's the goal, folks. That's God's goal for us. He could just wipe us all out and just completely recreate, but, you know, he, uh, he has a plan that includes you and me. A desire that includes you and me. A gift to give to you and to me. And so it is that... Uh, uh, we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. Why? Because it's not something you do yourself. It's something God does in you. And so when the gift is delivered like that, um, you know, but do you want that gift? That's, that's the question we really have to experience and we really have to think about. We really have to pray for do you want that gift? Uh, you ever seen a kid at Christmas getting something that they uh, really had always wanted, you know, and they tear it, you know, they tear the wrapping paper off just as fast as they can, and and if it's what they wanted, they're frantic with joy, and if it's not, um, you know, there's uh, there's vast disappointment. Um, Remember when I was in college, I wanted a telephoto lens for my camera. I had great visions of becoming a wildlife photographer, and you know, in my spare time and stuff. And uh, and it is funny if you saw my first real attempt at that uh, was a flying pheasant, and it was a brown blur with a red splotch on it. You know, they have the red spot, and you could see that red splotch, but you couldn't have told in a million years what it was. So anyway, I wanted a telephoto lens, and so. Imagine my joy that Christmas uh, morning when I went down and found something that was about that big around, you know, and about that tall. And uh, and I thought, yes. And I picked it up and it didn't feel right. And I opened it up. It was a can of uh, spray de-icer for your, <laughs> for your windshield, which, I, honest to goodness, I never actually even used. Um, somewhere it, it is still sitting. I may have given it away. I uh, just went out and scraped my windshield. You still had to scrape your windshield. I mean, it didn't like melt all the ice or anything. It was one of those things that largely was pointless. But anyway, it wasn't what I wanted, you know, and I thought it looked right, you know, and I was, I was absolutely thrilled. And then suddenly it was not, <laughs> not even something that I figured I was going to use and did not. Um, not out of spite, just because I didn't ever use it, you know. So, uh, uh, but do you want this gift from God, which he is offering as, uh, you know, something he is willing, able, and even desiring to give you? You know, that move toward Christian perfection, being perfected in love, toward moving from the perishable to the imperishable. Do you want that? reality in your life you know if you do god's going to deliver it probably for most of us isn't going to be in this life at least in terms of even as much as wesley calls christian perfection or being perfected in christian love 
but that ultimate sense of the uh, of the perfection of the physical with the perfection of the spiritual so that the end result is you have this perfect union of physical and spiritual which is what God created us to be in the first place we don't become angels we are always going to be human beings created by God but created to be eternal not you know to die we talked about that yesterday so you know it's a it's a really amazing thing in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised imperishable never to die again never to go down to the grave and we will be changed what does a change look like well I, it's eternal i don't know I, I you know it's like with what kind of bodies do they come and uh, and then you know paul says you foolish galatians that's eh, irrelevant you know god will do what he does <laughs> I, I i just i kind of love that it's sort of like well what will it be like um I, I don't know but you're gonna like it you know i don't know exactly what it's gonna look like but it's gonna it's gonna be perfect but in the meantime we wait uh, and some of you are very sick of waiting right this moment and uh uh, and I understand that, you know, but the, the reality of human existence at this point involves a great deal of waiting. We wait to be reunited with our loved ones who have died and gone on. We wait to be reunited with people we hear about, you know, I, and I think I've said this before, my grandfather who died before I was born and everybody said, oh, your grandfather would have loved you. And there was within me a certain resentment to that phrase. Um, it is uh, it is a significant, you know, sorrow to me that uh, I never met my grandfather, Papke. And I look forward to seeing him. So people we know who have died and people we don't know who have died. Um, you know, and, it, and it's not so much people, but that great spiritual relationship with the saints, which will be ours in Christ at that time eternally you know you want to spend time talking to abraham lincoln well you know what you got eternity to do it i feel certain that abraham lincoln died as a christian and i think he's going to be there and i would it, it would be interesting to talk to him maybe you know maybe i'll be too busy doing this that or the other thing uh, just glorifying god and you know i don't think there's going to be that much glorification for us as individuals relative to what we see as human importance here we are going to be glorified far beyond uh you know to receive some of god's glory in heaven now think about this uh, you know the most famous person you've ever met has never been glorified in the way that you and i will be glorified in the kingdom by receiving the presence of god and, uh, and and the glory that he intends has claimed and promised and will fulfill you know to share of his glory so uh you know people aren't going to be famous in heaven we're all going to be glorified by god and living in the glory of god and it's just it's going to be glorious you know beyond your imagining so um you know these things it's all going to be changed he goes, I says, for the perishable must clothe itself with imperish the imperishable, and the mortal must put on immortality. We're no longer constrained by the things that constrain us right now. We are set free for eternity and immortality. And, uh, and, and the clothing that we wear, the covering that covers us, that, that is the outward appearance, will be imperishable. And at that point, death will be swallowed up in victory. Whose victory? Uh, ours. That victory of Jesus shared with us, and, and we get to claim the results of it. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? It no longer has any bearing on us. It no longer controls us. It no longer threatens us. Death no longer threatens us. The sting of death is sin. What caused death in the first place? Sin. The power of sin is the law. 
knowing the difference between what's right and what's wrong, knowing the difference between what's good and what's bad, knowing the difference between what is godly and what is sinful. Uh, and then we stand accused. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory. Whose victory? Again, our victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, stand firm. Let nothing move you from the place of waiting, anticipating. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be talking about... Uh, the subject of anticipation as we look at the parable of the ten virgins. Uh, let nothing move you from that place. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So much of everything else that we do is in vain. There is nothing that you possess in this life that you will take with you to the next. No thing. And, uh, and so, you know, when we work for money, when we work for goods, when we work for things we want, um, none of that is going to matter in the light of eternity. Absolutely not. You will look back and either be ashamed or laugh heartily at the things you thought were important. Until then, however, we should work in the Lord. We should pursue what it is that God wants to give us a full and perfected relationship with him in his kingdom which we cannot fully claim but which one day we will and uh, and so we are a resurrection people that is the goal of our life that is the purpose of our life and that is god's purpose for us and uh, that is my prayer for you that you will strive toward the perfection found in the resurrection gift of God. Amen. Have a great day. We will see you here on the Owego United Methodist Church Facebook page tomorrow at 1030. And then after that, on my personal Facebook page and uh, on YouTube. So hopefully that will, somehow you will find it and you will be able to worship with us. Bye-bye.